So this is the follow-up video to Upper Position Playing on classical guitar. And this comes from my second method book. And we've gone through a lot of videos in the second book. And here we're halfway through learning our upper position notes. So in the previous video, we learned playing melodies, little melodies and pieces in first position, third position, and fifth position. And in this section, we're going to be um, learning about how we shift from one area of the guitar to the other. So how we transition from one position to another position. And then we're gonna play some solos in this video. And then there'll be a follow-up video with all the duets that have shifts. Um, there's lots of different ways to shift from one area of the guitar to another. So we're gonna cover three ways with these notes that we've learned in these areas of the guitar. So just to review, we've, we're dealing with the notes um, from in a C major scale in each of these positions. So for example, C, D, E, F, G, third position, C, D, E, F, G, A, fifth position, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the question is, how do we get from one area to the other? Because often in classical guitar, we have to be playing down here and then do a brief moment where we go into upper position. So the first way of shifting would be to shift on an open string. So I'll demonstrate first. Let me do the whole example. So this is a great way to shift. It's probably the easiest way to shift and one of the most musical because when, while you shift your hand, the open E string is ringing, so its sound is happening while you move your hand, and then you can complete the scale. That means from the open E to the next note, there will be no gap or break. The only potential problem is that open E string might ring out a little bit. So you might sometimes see people mute it um, or do all, all sorts of funny things or just let it ring randomly. Um, but it's, it's very important and I use open string shifts with my students a lot because it's the easiest way to shift and it's very successful. Um, maybe there's a little too much extra sustain, but that's okay. So here's another way, because sometimes it's good to also just shift on the same string. Uh, this is a shift on the second string. So we're going to proceed from C, D, E. So we're going to actually try to connect this D to this E. Now, of course, it's impossible because you have to physically let go of the note and move your hand. But we try to minimize the damage by making it a smooth shift. You'll notice too, on the way up, I can keep my f first finger down. Or at least like on the string. I release the pressure, but keep my finger on the string and then use it as a guide. That keeps my finger very um, securely on the string, makes the shift less unstable. Of course, you're gonna have to practice not having a hiccup between the D and the E. Lots of students will play, you know, and then there'll be a little gap, but you have to try to connect those notes. The best way to do it is just make sure you get enough sustain out of the second note, out of the D there. Because then the sustain kind of fills up the room with sound, and then you make the shift while it's sustaining in the room. And it's pretty unnoticeable that you've shifted. Same um, kind of shift, but this time we're going to shift on the first string. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the shift happens between G and A. So the same issues occur as the shift on the second string, just on a different string. So same thing here. Keep that first finger down, because it just offers lots of stability in the left hand. So let's take a look at some of the pieces that use these shifts. I think there's only one solo piece. So it's a Chinese folk song. And this shift is, the shifts are going to occur from fifth position. And then later on, we're going to shift directly down to first position. And then back up to fifth position. So it's going to be 
Um, it, this one is a little bit of a tricky shift, but practice it slowly and you'll be fine. So fifth position starts in fifth position. The shifts are pretty easy in this particular piece because all the shifts happen after the end of a phrase. So once you finish a phrase up, you get to start in a new area of the instrument. And so as long as you let the last note of the phrase ring out nicely, um, you can just move your hand and it doesn't really affect the musical flow. Um, in some of the duets, your shifts are going to occur kind of during the music, in which case you have to smooth it out a lot more. In this case, you just have to make sure to end your phrases and start your phrases nicely, and then it's quite easy. Notice though that when you're playing in a, a musical piece, instead of in a, like a musical example, um, sometimes the fingering isn't perfect, right? So in this case, because of the string crossings, we have to use a different fingering sometimes. So for example here, I have to bring my third finger out of position like that. We've done that a lot in, a lot in first position where we, in order to be legato across the strings, we use um, a different finger than normal, right? So in, in this case, on that second bar, if we used our fourth finger, it would clip that note, we wouldn't be able to sustain from this note to this note. So we have to change our fingering. But right afterwards, just go back to normal and it's just like a little oddity. The more advanced you get a guitar, you're going to find little oddities like that. Um, when you play in first position, use your fourth finger on the high G just to make sure that you can play legato from G to D. It does occur, um, particularly on the third line. Going from that G to that D, we want four and then three. Um, besides that, it's a pretty straightforward song. You just play in one position, then the other, and um, very easily accomplishable. So, enjoy. Um, the, follow, the following videos will be um, the duets from this section, and, and then we're going to move on to the rhythm.